Hello, I'm Professor Brian Candido, who works at Springfield Technical Community College. And for the next period of time, which I hope is 20 minutes or less, we are going to build an app for Android devices. This video will focus on creating the app, and at the end, I will show you how to run it. You can either run it on an Android device, if you have one. If you don't, you can use an emulator, and I will provide links on how to actually run it and how to set up the emulator if you need to. Unfortunately, this tool is not yet available for iPhones, so you will have to work with an Android device or the emulator. The focus of the video is to create an app. So what we're going to do is you're going to navigate to the App Inventor website at mit.edu. So type in ai2.appinventor.mit.edu. Then you're going to have to log in with a Gmail account. Fortunately, my email from STCC is linked. I have several apps and we have a course that we have run in the past that allows you to build an app. But what we're going to do today is create a new one. So we're going to go up here to my projects and say um, start a new project. And you have to get a name and we're going to call it Paint Pot. Paint pod is a term in uh, coding where you can create a picture on a canvas. And it says it already exists, so I'm going to have to give it a new name. And I'm going to call it Paint Pot 2020 for STEM Week. Notice there is no spaces between my file, name, file names. Everything is squished together. So I'm going to get a blank canvas for us to work with. And notice you can do a phone or a tablet. The choice is yours. So I'm going to do phone over here is the user interface. These are the different components or widgets that we drag over to build the user experience. Here is the screen and here is the um, properties or how things look and behave and blocks is where we're going to write some code. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do a phone. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over a canvas. And canvas is found under drawing and animation. And I'm going to drag a canvas and I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to go up to where it says screen one and see how it says screen one here. The text property over here is where you can put in your name. So I'm going to put Professor Candido Paint. And notice if I change the property here, it also changes it up here. Next thing I want to do is the canvas to be of a good size. So I'm going to click on canvas and I can rename it if I want to, but I'm going to leave it canvas one and I'm going to come over here and leave the height automatic at this point, but I'm going to click on the width property and say fill parent and notice how it's stretched across. The next thing I'm going to do is specify the height and I'm going to tell it in percent. I'm going to make it about 60% of the overall screen space on the device. All right, maybe later we'll make it a little bigger. So we can have a blank canvas or we can use a picture. I already have a picture of a cat which I will be sharing with you. If you would like to get your own cat or dog or person, just go out to Google or perform a search and all you need to do, you want something where the face looks like that. Right click and do save link as, and it will go to your downloads. Like I said before, I already have a file that which I will provide to the website that you can use. So I'm gonna go down here to where it says media and do an upload. I'm gonna to browse to my downloads, and I'm gonna to go to my, um, I'm gonna go actually to my downloads, because it's waiting there for me. And I have a kitty.png. The files must be .png or a JPEG. I'm gonna click there. I'm going to say open and then I'm going to click OK. And if you look, the picture has been added as an asset to my project. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to link that picture to the canvas. If I go in background image, I'm going to link to kitty and I'm going to click OK. And there is my beautiful cat. All right, we're going to do a couple more things. We are going to go back over here 
And under layout, we're going to grab a horizontal arrangement. A horizontal arrangement allows me to put things next to each other. So I'm going to go here. And the next thing I'm going to do is tell it to stretch across. So make sure it's highlighted here. And you're going to go over to width and say fill parent. I'm going to say OK. And notice it's that big. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to user layout and I'm going to do a button. And I'm going to drag the button into the horizontal arrangement. And notice it will right size it just to be there. Because I'm going to have several buttons, I think it's probably good to rename it. So I'm going to click here and do uh, rename. I'm going to do BTN. That's a little abbreviation. Let me know it's a button. And I'm going to say clear. And then I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to come over here and type in clear. And notice the text here shows up here. I'm going to go up here and get another button. And I'm going to put it right next to it. And we're going to rename that one to BTN Take PIX. Notice the names, there is no spaces. And then I'm going to come over here and change its text to be Take Pick. And I'm going to um, kind of abbreviate it to save space on the screen. And then the other thing I'm going to do is one more button, and we're going to say Share. This will give us the ability to text someone if I have a device, a tablet, or phone with a, a data plan. So I'm going to say share. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change the text to be share. Hit enter. And what I'm, I'm also going to do here is I'm going to have these centered. So I'm going to click on the horizontal arrangement. I'm going to come up here and do center and see how much prof more professional that looks. If over time I want to make the canvas bigger, just come up here and change its uh, height percentage to something like maybe 70%. Remember, you're, you're coding it for different devices. Super. And then we'll do one more horizontal arrangement. And we're going to go down to layout. And then we're going to grab that. And we're going to put it right below. And you'll notice you have to, it's a little tricky sometimes getting things to go. The blue line means it's going to put it above. And the blue line means I'm going to put it below. And what I'm going to do is click on the horizontal arrangement too. And I'm going to tell it to fill the parent. Stretch it out that way. I'm going to go up to buttons in the user interface. And right now we're going to draw on this um, using black. But in case people want to change the color to something different, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to rename this button to BTN green. And then I'm going to come over here. And what I'm going to do is change its background color to green. And then I'm going to change the text on it to say green. And then you can add more. I'm just going to do a couple to get you going. Then I'm going to grab another one. We'll do red, green, blue, or the good old RGB. Put it right here. I'm going to rename it BTN red. Click OK. I'm going to change the background color on the button to be red. Kind of go with our um, what we've been doing and we're going to come down here and say red and then maybe we should move the red green blue but see i can move it over to here there you go i'm going to get another button and i'm going to drag up oh, i got to get myself positioned just so i'm going to do another one come right here red green and blue so red should go here and this will become blue. And remember, you can always add your other colors later if you wish to. Pink, orange, whatever one you're feeling, you can do. Here's blue. And I'm going to come down here and say blue. And just for visual pleasing sake, what I'm going to do is tell the components on the horizontal two to be centered horizontally. There you go. We got to do two more things. Because we want to take a picture and we want to share, we have to go grab those components. So let's come over to these drawers and let's see where we can find the share and the take picture. So the take picture, we need to get access to the device's camera. So I'm going to drag it. It doesn't matter where I put it. It's called a non-visible component and it comes down here. And we're going to go under social and we're going to grab the sharing. And we're also going to bring that over. 
All right. Oh, I guess it didn't stick. Let me put it here on the screen and notice these are two non-visible components. So before we go any further, we have a screen, we have a canvas, we have a horizontal arrangement with a button clear, with a um, take pick and button share, and we have three colors and you can add more. Notice there's a hierarchical relationship. Here is your screen and underneath the screen are the different components. This canvas and the horizontal and this horizontal are all at the same level. These buttons belong to the horizontal. So now we're gonna start writing some code. We're gonna to go to blocks, and this is where you write code. So I hope you understand that we're going to draw on the cat's face and draw lines, and we can change to different colors. Once we get that working, we will come in here and we will do um, these buttons, time permitting. So we're gonna come up here, and the first thing we're going to do is reset. We'll do a button reset. So we're gonna go look for the code for button clear or reset. And we're going to say, when you click on it, what do we want to do? Golden blocks are opportunities to do code. So we are going to tell the canvas that we want to clear it. So we're going to go here, and we're going to drag this up here. So when you click on the clear button, we are going to clear the canvas. We're going to erase any lines we put on it. Just for fun, let's go look at some what other options that we have available to us. We have clear. And sometimes you may have to play around with the scroll, bra scroll bar on the browser versus the scroll bar within the project. And this scroll bar here. Okay. And I think we're good. All right. So another thing we want to do is set the color if something changes. So what we're going to do just for fun is we're going to do button red. When you click on button red, we are going to change the, on the canvas, the color. So now we're going to go back to the canvas and we're going to look for the opportunity to change something. Okay, so let's look for something that has drawing color. Let's see if we can find that. Let's scroll on through and we got the width. How about paint color? We'll grab that, put it here. And remember, when button red is touched or tapped on, we want to set the color to red. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to go to colors, and we're going to choose red and pop it in here. And I'm going to show you the beautiful part of App Inventor is we had red, green, blue. I can right-click here. I can say duplicate. And I have an error right now because I have two button reds. All I need to do is change this to green, come here, Click on this and choose the green color I want. And then I can right click again and I can say duplicate. And then right over here, we're going to change it to blue. And you can see how easy it is that if you want to, you can actually add all the different colors you want. And notice you can rearrange the blocks in any way you want. Now, if you remember, I want to be able to draw on the kitty's face. So I'm going to show you how to write code. And basically, we're going to be dragging our mouse, and we're going to draw a color. Or we're going to draw a line in the color that's selected. So we're going to go to Blocks. So we're going to go to the Canvas. We're going to go here, and when you drag your mouse, we're going to draw a line. And basically, how you would draw a line in App Inventor is you have an XY coordinate, X goes sideways, Y goes up and down. And you have a previous and you have a current, so you know where to draw. So we're going to go to the canvas. And then we're going to look for a purple block of code that lets us draw a line. So here we're going to do a draw a line. And we're going to snap that right in there. And notice I have a warning here because these are not populated. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the previous X click here, and we're going to get it, and we're going to put it here, and we're going to get the previous Y, and we're going to get that, and then we're going to get the current X, and then we're going to get the current Y. All right. Seems like that looks a little funny, so let's get rid of that.
It's so weird how it looks like that. Never seen that before. So we're going to get previous X. Oh my goodness. If that happens, just double click on it and it should come back. Previous X, we're going to do the get. I'm going to pop it right there. See, that looks much better. Previous Y, we do the get. And we put it right here. So now let's go through our checklist. We have the ability to change color. We have the ability to draw on the um, picture. And then um, we can clear. So we've coded that. Now we got to be able to take the picture and then we got to be able to share it. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here. So here's how we change colors. If you ever want to add a new color, it's as easy as dragging a button from the user interface over to here, setting up a color you want, and then coming over here and duplicating the block. So now we're going to take a picture and then replace the one that's on the, uh, already on the app, which is the cat. You could take a picture of your little brother, your significant other, and you can draw lips on them or fangs and have a lot of fun. Maybe in the selection cycle, if there's someone you want to take a picture of, you can put in there. All right, so let's get ready to do the picture taken. So we're going to, when you click on button, take picture, we're going to look for a golden block. And then we're going to go to the camera and we're going to take a picture. This works out beautifully. So now the trick is once you take in the picture and you click the checkbox, we want to take that picture and put it into the background of the canvas. And it's actually quite easy. So click here and we're going to do after the picture is taken. And notice we have ability to get at the image. We are going to go to the canvas and we're going to look for the ability to set the background image. See right here where it says background image, we're going to grab, grab that. You might want on your own time, poke around inside the different um, properties and see what you have avail uh, what is available to you. And then we do this and we do get the picture and we put it here. So now you can take a picture of anyone, bring it into your app, and then you can draw pictures on it. So the next thing I want to do is show you how to do sharing. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the button share. And when you click on it, what do you want to happen? And I'm trying to, uh, what do you call it, place my uh, code here, my code blocks so they're easy to see. Okay. So notice I got the picture together and I got the button colors together and I got the dragging. So now we're going to go to the sharing and we're going to come up. Oh, my scroll bar. We're going to share the file here, and that should bring up the text messaging on the device you're on. So what we need to do is save that picture. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. And we have about two minutes left. We're going to go back to the canvas, and we're going to look for the ability to save the picture. So we're going to take this, pop it in here, and then we have to give it a file name and it can be a temporary one. So we're going to come up here and we're going to go text. We're going to take the blank one, pop it in here. And I'm going to put in T E M P dot P N G. Oh, I spelled P N G wrong. No spaces and make sure it's T E M P dot P N G. And believe it or not, in 18 minutes, you've created your first app that will run on an Android device. So let's go over it. Here's your components and here's your code. We have coded the red, green, and blue in each one of these. And I hope this is the start of a journey for you enjoying how to use App Inventor. To run it, you have a couple options. You have to have an Android tablet. Well, one of them is, let's click to connect. You can use the AI companion. If you have an Android device, all you need to do is go to Google Play and download the AI Companion. And I will give you a link on how you can do that. You can also do the emulator, which means you need to install software on your computer. And then you need, uh, or you could also do USB where you use a wire to connect it. AI Companion, if you do this approach, you have to have an Android device, tablet or phone. You have to have on that phone the App Inventor Companion version 2.0, and you have to actually make sure that this computer with the browser is connected to the same network at the same time as the device. 
And then what you do is you come in here, you get a picture of this QR code on the device, the physical device you have, open up the app, AI app, uh, I'm sorry, AI2 companion, and then take a picture of this and your app should be brought down from the cloud onto your device. I just realized we had a small bug with the code. Notice I have, I have Y going to X. So what I got to do is come here and change that to be current. I'm going to change that to be previous X. And this should be previous Y. My bad. My apologies. Current X, current Y. And what people don't see is I have it running in my emulator right now. So if I do red, Notice I can draw glasses on my little kitty. I can change the color to blue, and I can put a little blue mustache. And I can do green. I can make a green tongue. And if you'd like to reset or clear, just hit clear, and you can start all over again. We can make red eyes on the kitty if we wanted to. Or actually, since we're getting near Halloween, Let's create little fangs on them. Red. There you go. All right. So I'm using the emulator. Doesn't mean you have to. You can use um, the your own device. You can use the emulator. And remember, don't forget, I had a little bug here. Make sure you have oh, X going to X and Y going to Y. I hope you enjoyed this and happy mobile app developing.